What if I told you the ability to make big things happen doesn't start with creativity or taking risks? It starts from our mindset. It starts from zero. We really wanted to create something incredible. It's Chris Lenamelio! Shazam can identify any song in between two to five seconds. Chris, it's such a pleasure to meet you and a privilege to be with you. You've got a product that most of us around the world all are delighted by. I can probably remember the first time we ever used it. I certainly remember the first time I did. Apple is buying the music ID service Shazam for $401 million. Hands up who uses Shazam. All right. Okay. Every organization Every team and every leader has the same challenge, the need to reinvent, innovate, and adapt in the face of relentless change. What's the solution? Learn to think differently. But if you question things, you can break them down into basic truths and then build up the possibilities. And that's exactly what we did when we came up with the idea for Shazam. both from creating Shazam and then from later working for eight years at Google and then four years at Dropbox, there was this philosophy of wanting to innovate on everything and every aspect, not just technology. At that time, all you could do was make phone calls and send text messages. And we thought there's got to be something else you can do with these mobile phones. And this is what we had to work with. This was the most popular phone in the year that Shazam launched. Because we had this great idea. You're just going to hold your phone up, it's going to listen, and then identify a song. We're just so far ahead of our time. We've got to find a way to do it. How can we do it? The first challenge was that it was impossible. Because you have to keep in mind that when we were starting Shazam, the iPod had not yet been invented, and iTunes had not yet been invented. All the things that we wanted to do were so many years away. So many years away. And so we went to the top institutions. They all said that the technology you're trying to create does not exist and we don't know how to do it. But we asked this professor, can you please rank the five smartest on this list? Where he said the number one rank is a guy named Avery Wang. But there was a problem. Once he joined, he also said it was impossible. The greatest pleasure in life is doing what people say you cannot do. There was one famous venture capitalist I won't name who looked at our demo and said, I don't see why anyone would ever use this. That was a real motivator. So you can see we had to solve so many problems along the way. And how did we solve these problems? It was creative persistence. Each problem as we faced it, whether it was building the search engine or the music database, or working with a basic phone. It was about solving each problem by thinking creatively. Build from basic truths, apply creative persistence, and pick your obsession. So you never give up. Yeah, yeah, never give up. Persistence. For six years from launch in 2002 until the iPhone App Store came out in 2008, for six years, Shazam had almost went bankrupt. The greatest mistake is to think that what you did yesterday will be sufficient for tomorrow. So try it tomorrow. Try to build from basic truths by questioning an assumption, questioning the way you normally think, and thinking differently for your own business and how you use technology. Start from zero. Think of all the things that can lead to friction. Things that you have to think. Things that you have to do. Here are some examples. When you look at these types of things, knowing, learning, choosing, think about one of your products, one product that you're building right now, 
and try to think, are any of these things things that your users have to do in order to use it? Is there something that they have to know? Is there some, something that they have to wait for? Is there something they have to input or register? Because the more of these things that you can remove, the more you delight them. When I bought my Tesla car, not only was there an electric car, I couldn't believe I just walked up to it and it unlocked. Because not because I'm in a key, but because of my phone. And then the key itself was the size of a credit card, so I just put it in my wallet. These types of things, removing all the friction, it makes it such a delightful experience. And that's what leads to game-changing innovation. The truth is that friction actually almost killed Shazam. Because when we launched our service with 2580 and a mobile phone, that was a great, that was the best we could do, <clears throat> but it was not the best user experience. A user had to know 2580. No, that's, that's friction. And that was really hard. A user had to type it into their phone. A user had to then figure out a way to download the song because there was no way to download the song once you got the text message. There was all these points of friction because of the technological world that we lived in at the time. And in those pieces of friction almost killed Shazam. When we launched in 2002, we then had to survive six years until 2008 when the App Store came out. And we almost went bankrupt that entire time. We had layoffs, we had down rounds, we barely survived for six years in this old world due to friction. Dropbox's whole innovation was based on eliminating friction. Because before Dropbox, there were many cloud services. Many cloud services. You could take your files and upload them to the cloud, and you could download them from the cloud. But the founders of Dropbox, and I joined Dropbox when it was only 100 people, the founders of Dropbox saw something. They said, when you click upload, that's friction. When you click download, that's friction. So let's make it so that the file is on your computer and in the cloud. That was incredibly hard. To do that, they had to solve two big problems. One is synchronization. They had to make it so that every time you changed your file on your computer, it would synchronize with the one in the cloud, and therefore they would be one and the same. And synchronization was a phenomenally difficult problem because of all the edge cases of what could go wrong. And then they also had to integrate it so that folder was on your computer and looked like, just like all the other folders on your computer, but it wasn't. And they had to hack their way into the file and folder system of every type of computer platform, every operating system, in order to create that experience. But when they did it, they took one step and they made it into zero steps. It used to be you clicked upload one step or download one step. And then with Dropbox, it was zero steps. You just changed your file and it was also in the cloud. And what they said to me when I joined is, Chris, the difference between zero and one is infinite. So you have to move mountains to eliminate friction. You have to map end to end the experience and think about where friction can occur. Search for it everywhere. Think through it end to end. What does your consumer have to experience? And then you have to just do everything you can, including inventing things to eliminate that friction. In the case of Shazam, inventing music recognition so it would just be one button and you wouldn't have to type in a radio station. In the case of Google, just one search and you get the result. In the case of Dropbox, the file is in the folder and it's in the cloud. You have to figure out how to eliminate that friction. And the planning is so extensive, I like to compare it to planning a surprise party for someone, a surprise birthday party. Think how you think of it end to end. Where are they going to be coming from? What time are they going to arrive? Where is everyone going to be when they arrive? How are we going to make sure they don't know there's a surprise party for them? Thinking through end to end the entire experience of the surprise party so that it will be a seamless experience. They'll just show up and they'll be surprised. That obsession of thinking end to end and then solving all the little problems is how you come up with a frictionless experience. Even had to fight tremendous competition, which by the way, we beat. Because Shazam ended up winning in music recognition, despite the fact that Google built its own copycat and put it onto every Android phone, which luckily most of you don't know about. Sony built, bought their own technology and put it into every Sony Ericsson phone. Philips built their own technology, copycats, all that copied Shazam. And then they offered to license the technology to anyone who wanted it. And yet we beat them all. And how did we beat them all? Because we were connected to our emotions. We cared about the entire experience, the name, Shazam, 
the look, the feel, the features. These are four examples of things that we built that none of those companies built. Synced lyrics, you identify a song in a bar, and then you look at the lyrics, and the lyrics are synchronized with the music, not on your phone, but in the bar. Synchronized with the live music that you're hearing in the bar. Offline recognition, where you, you're down underneath in a nightclub where there's no mobile connection. You identify the song, and it saves it until you get out of the nightclub and you have connection connectivity to identify it later, something that we built at Shazam and none of those other companies built. Auto Shazam, where you go, go for the night dancing in a club, you turn on Auto Shazam by holding down the press, the button, and then it just Shazams all night long so that you have a list of every song you heard at the end of the night. And discovery charts, where you can see the, what are the best songs everywhere. You can see the best songs in Guadalajara, that, what are the songs that are sh people are Shazamming in Guadalajara? <laughs> and I bet people love music in Guadalajara. <laughs> so, beating Google. When you look at these two companies, which company that was building a thermostat do you think was connected to their emotions? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? That's what happens when a team is connected to their emotions. They come out with great results. And I have to say, when the App Store came out eight years after starting Shazam, and Shazam was ranked by Apple as one of the top most popular apps, although I am not an I told you, co I told you so kind of guy, and I told you so kind of guy, I did call that VC, the venture capitalist, and I said, it turns out people will use this. And one great example I love, because my son plays with Legos so much, is the obsession within Legos that people, few people know about. It actually wasn't the founder of Legos that came up with this novel idea and even had the obsession, but the son, 30 years into the business, who was obsessed with this idea, or came up with this idea of a system of play a system of play, interchangeable plastic pieces that could connect with any other of the plastic pieces, and therefore you could build anything. Sounds like a pretty simple idea. How hard can that be to execute, right? Doesn't seem that hard. Well, it turns out there is a very important thing if you want that to work well, which is that every piece has to be exactly the size you're expecting when you manufacture it. Because if it's just slightly too big, then when you stick it to the other piece, you'll never get it off again. Or if it's just slightly too small, you may, it may fall off. So you have to get the size of every piece exactly correct. Exactly correct. And so Lego worked on this for 10 years. 10 years of obsession with getting the size of plastic manufacturing exactly correct. And they experimented with different materials and different and heating and cooling methods over 10 years until they were able to accurately ma manufacture plastic pieces with an accuracy and a tolerance within 1 20th of a human hair. And that's an obsession. 10 years. And it worked. When you have an obsession like this, whether it's investing hundreds of millions of dollars into speed with data centers and fiber optics, or getting every song for Shazam, or getting the tolerance of plastic pieces manufactured just right, it costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time. And guess what? There will be many people who disagree with you. And if some of those people will be your own co-founders, your own partners, the investors who fund your company are gonna push back. There's gonna be resistance and they're gonna say, why are we investing all this money in this crazy obsession you have? And you're going to have to stick with it.